Welcome to State of Tech. This is James here, and I'm going to take you through the setup process of setting up your iPod Touch. Um, this process is also the same process that you would take on setting up your iPhone or iPad, and we're going to have follow-up videos for those as well. Now, with this setup, I'm imagining that you're setting it up for yourself, um, but if you're looking to set up this iPod or an iPhone or an iPad for a child and want to enable restrictions and setting up an iCloud ID for them, We'll show you how to do that in another video, but for this one, we're just gonna take you through the general setup process that you would wanna do for yourself. So here we have our iPod Touch, and it's on its um, screen. When we first open up the box and we turn it on, this is the screen that we're gonna be brought to. And we'll go ahead and just swipe over to begin the process of setting it up. Now here, we're gonna go ahead and pick our default language for our device. You see, we can scroll through a plethora of plenty of languages to choose from. Um, we're in the US, so and I speak English, so I'm going to choose English, and then we're going to select our country or region. By default, it's already going to know where you are based upon where you bought the iPod, but if you're going to use it in a different country or a different region, go ahead and scroll through this list and find the one that you're going to want to use. Once you've done that, just go ahead and tap on it, and it's going to take us to the next page where we're going to choose a Wi-Fi network. Now for the iPod Touch and um, generally the Wi-Fi iPad, you're gonna need to connect them to a Wi-Fi network or connect them to iTunes down here at the bottom to go ahead and activate the iPod. Um, connecting it through iTunes will allow you to just connect it, plug it in the lightning cable that came with your iPod, and then go ahead and set it up that way. But for this method, we're gonna go ahead and choose Wi-Fi and I'm just gonna go ahead and tap on my Wi-Fi network go ahead and put in my password and bring the device back into the screen. Now, once you've entered in your Wi-Fi password, just go ahead and hit join, and it's going to go ahead and sign you into the network and take us to the activation page where our iPod is gonna be activated. It's going to ask me if I like to enable location services. Now, with location services, it's going to allow maps and other applications to gather my location and give the approximate location of where I'm standing. You have the option to either enable or disable these features. I'm just going to go ahead and enable them. That's what I like to do. Next, we're going to set up our iPod Touch. We can either set it up as a new, restore from iCloud, or restore from iTunes. If you're bringing in a previous transfer, say you already own an iPod and you're upgrading to a new one, you can go ahead and restore from either your iTunes backup or iCloud backup if you're using iOS 5.0 or above. Now, you would have already had to have previously set up the iCloud backup, and we do have a video on how to do that on our site. So if you do not have an iCloud backup previously or you want to learn how to set one up, be sure and check out that video on our site. And if you're restoring from an iTunes backup, it's just going to be plugging in your iPod to iTunes and selecting that. For this circumstance, we're just going to go ahead and set it up as a new iPod Touch. So I'm going to take you through that process. And we're going to tap on set up as new. Now here we're going to be asked to sign in with our actual Apple ID. Now this is going to be the um, ID that we use to purchase apps and music and movies and rent different things, do our backup, communicate with messages, game center, and even get iBooks. Now if you have one, you're just going to go ahead and tap sign in and you see it's going to bring us to the Apple ID page where we can sign in with our current Apple ID. But if you don't have one, you can go ahead and tap create a free Apple ID and it's going to bring you into the process where you're going to have to enter in your birthday. Uh, your name, your age, your address, and you're going to have to enter in a credit card information to create a iCloud account so that way you can purchase apps, movies, and music, and iBooks, and anything like that. So once you've gone through this process, it'll take you into the next screen, which I'll show you. I'm going to go ahead and just sign in with my current Apple ID. Now that I've entered in my Apple ID password, I'm just going to go ahead and hit next up here in the top right hand corner. And it's going to sign me in, and then I'm going to have to agree to the terms and conditions, which you can go ahead and scroll through and read here, and there are different tabs you can read through. Once you've read through all that, go ahead and tap agree, and then tap agree again to go ahead and confirm that. Now the next thing is going to set up our Apple ID for our iPod, and it's going to bring us into the next phases where we're going to enable messages and FaceTime and all that before we can actually get into the home screen of our iPod. So now that it's here, we're going to be asked if we want to use iCloud. And you see that iCloud lets us access our music, photos, contacts, calendar, and more on all of our devices. 
what this does is if you have a iPhone and iPod and iPad, or if you have more than one device, using iCloud is going to allow you to sync everything across each device. So if I were to use iCloud and it's going to be associated with my Apple ID, if I had an iPhone, any changes I made via my contacts or calendars or reminders or Safari bookmarks or even iMessages for that matter, it's all going to sync across each one of my devices. And so that way, if I am using one and make a change on one, I can pick up another device and have that change reflected there. So you have the option to not use iCloud or use iCloud. And one of the major advantages that I would recommend using iCloud for is that you get five gigabytes of free iCloud storage to back up your devices. So you won't have to worry about plugging it back into your computer or even plugging it into a computer at all to use your iPod. You could actually just let it use iCloud to back up for you over a Wi-Fi network. So for this instance, we're going to use iCloud and then we have the option now to use find my iPod. Now, if we had an iPhone or an iPad, it's going to say find my iPhone or find my iPad. And what this does is it allows us to use our um, locate lock and erase our iPod if we happen to lose it and our Apple ID and password will be required before anyone can reactivate it or erase it. So if you want to use this, this is great if you happen to misplace it or if um, anything were to happen and it were to be stolen or anything, you'd be able to try and track its location as best you could using this feature here. I highly recommend using Find My iPod Touch or Find My iPhone or Find My iPad. It can be helpful even if you happen to misplace your iPod in your couch at home. You can actually activate a little sound to beep through your iPod so you can actually look for it, whether it's on vibrate or on silent or on loud. It'll play a noise and you'll be able to find it in your house or hopefully if it was stolen, you'd be able to find and track the location. So I'm going to go ahead and use Find My iPod. Now you see we have iMessage and FaceTime. Now what this is going to do is iMessage allows us to send messages back and forth between um, iOS devices. So as long as your iOS device has iMessage on it, you'll be able to use your Apple ID, which would be an email address. And then in some circumstances, if you're using it on a phone, you can associate your phone number with it to use for iMessage. And you can go ahead and use that to send messages back and forth between your friends that have iOS devices. And it's a free service. It uses your Wi-Fi connection, or if on an iPhone, it uses your data connection to actually send messages back and forth. It's kind of a built-in instant messenger here for the iPhone and iPod and iPad. Now, we have a list here of phone numbers that we have, and they have each one of these a blue check mark next to it. And if we didn't want our email associated with it, we just go ahead and tap on any of these, and it's going to go ahead and not use those for iMessage. Now, if we wanted to actually use some, it's we just tap on them again. The blue check mark will come back, and then we can scroll down even and view what FaceTime and iMessage is. Now, FaceTime is uh, the video chat service with the iPod. You actually can make video calls and see face-to-face -face conversations with all your friends. And so it's the same emails and phone numbers associated with iMessage that are for FaceTime as well. Go ahead and hit Next, which is going to update our iCloud settings and then bring us into the next screen. Now here, after it's updated our iCloud settings, we can create a passcode, and it's going to be a four-digit simple passcode if you like to lock your device that way. If you don't want to add a passcode, you'll see this word right here, don't add passcode, and you can go ahead and bypass this step. Now, adding a passcode is going to be great for security features, so that way only you know a four-digit number to access your iPod and that way, um, if someone were to take it, they wouldn't be able to access the iPod without your permission or without you entering in the uh, code. Uh, for this one, let's just go ahead and skip this. You can go ahead and set this up here if you'd like to. You'll just have to enter in a password and then confirm it. Um, if you're going to bypass it, they're going to give you a pop-up saying that you know they would really recommend you do it at a passcode. But if you want to continue, just tap continue. Now we have an option here to use Siri, which um, helps us get things done by asking our voice. And all we have to do is hold down the home button to activate Siri on our device. This does use a Wi-Fi connection. So if you're not connected to Wi-Fi, you won't be able to use Siri, but you can use Siri to do things like setting up reminders, turning on Wi-Fi, turning on Bluetooth, um, setting notes, FaceTiming contacts, messaging contacts. You have a wide variety of things that you can do with Siri all by voice command. 
So it's up to you if you'd like to use it. Um, we're going to just go ahead and use Siri here for this example. And then we have diagnostics and usage, which is going to keep track of all of the crash reports and diagnostics and even usage data on our device. And this could include some of the location data that we have that collects through each app. And it's asking us here if we'd like to help uh, send this stuff to Apple to help them improve its products and services. Um, this is going to be totally up to you. I typically don't send these things. I like to just keep them on my device. Tap on that, and now we're getting the Welcome to iPod screen. Now from here, tap Get Started, and it's going to take us to our home screen of our device. And you see we can now have Passbook. We'd like to use our location. Some of the different applications are going to start loading in and populating our information based upon our Apple ID. So this is the basic setup of the iPod Touch, and we're going to have more videos showing you how to set up some more basic features, like how to add a passcode now if you'd like to, um, setting up email addresses, downloading your first application, um, different things like that that could be useful for you to help you get started using your iPod Touch and making the most out of your device. So thanks for checking out this video on State of Tech, and if you want to learn more information about iOS devices, iOS 7, or even some more quick tips, be sure and visit stateoftech.net.